All right, so what I've done now is I've set the PIDs back to the Betaflight defaults, which should fly pretty well. And I want to show you the yaw, the effect of changing yaw P. Uh, this is a little hard to demonstrate because to tell you the truth, I tune yaw P mostly by feel, and it's hard to demonstrate that uh, just by showing you the video and the sticks overlay. When the yaw P is too low, the copter will feel slidey and imprecise in turns. This is especially apparent if you're trying to hit air gates or you're trying to hit gaps when flying freestyle. If you're not sure if your yaw P is too low, uh, <laughs> and if you're having trouble hitting gaps, uh, hitting gates, try raising your yaw P. If you just always seem to kind of swing wide and you're always kind of trying to push it, no, get through the gap, to hit the gap. Why am I such a bad pilot? It might be that your yaw P is too low. Um, the problem with yaw is that you can't really see oscillation on the yaw axis because uh, the yaw axis doesn't have a lot of authority. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the yaw P to a ridiculous level and try to show you what really extreme excess yaw P gain looks like. But I think, and this really sucks for because you guys who don't know what a good yaw P feels like, you can't do it. But you can't. You have to tune yaw by feel. I feel like. I don't think you can tune it by looking for oscillation. Maybe I'll get some oscillation on this one, maybe. So I'm going to take it up to 130, which I may even, that may not even be too high. Uh, let's see what happens. See, nothing bad is happening. Little, little stutter there, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. What I should find though is that if I try and fly gaps, copter feels really precise. Let's see if I can raise it a little bit more and get something bad to happen. The thing is, you should never be. You shouldn't be trying to raise the P to the point where something bad happens. So I can show you what excess P gain looks like, but you should really never get to that point. If you get to that point, you're way past the point of it's been it's been too high for a long time. Unless you just like how it feels. What I suggest you do is that you play with the P. You set it really low to like a value of 40 or 20, and then you raise it slowly 10 or 15 points at a time, like you saw me doing, to feel how the copter's uh, handling changes. No, oh, I saw a little shutter there. Hang on. No. I'm trying to do some sharp turns. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say that I see any negative signs. It's just preposterously high. From it feels a little stiff, honestly. It feels almost a little stiff. Let's see if a copter flies any different. Oh, now, oh, oh! I can't believe I dropped it upside down. I have to walk now. Let's drop it back down to 70, which is the default, and I'll walk while it's doing that. All I can say is that when the yaw P gain gets too high, the copter will fly less smoothly. It will fly more roughly. Uh, sometimes you'll get twitches uh, as if you had too much vibration in the uh, in the in the flight controller. Um, but you'll seldom get anything as blatant as an oscillation. It's really about feel, and that sucks for you guys who are new and who don't know the feel of a copter that's flying right. Going back to the defaults with a reasonable yaw P. Let's see how that how that feels and what it looks like. Let's see if I can avoid flying into my own head because I'm not standing where I expect to be standing. See, the prop wash there is better. The 
prop wash oscillation is much better under these aggressive turns. than it was, it's much better than it was. So having done that, now let's go ahead and land, we'll put a new battery on here, and we will take a look at the eye turn. Hey, where am I? I'm not standing there. Why am I not standing there? That's not where I should be. <laughs> so disorienting. 